In 10th grade, when given the Odyssey, I confronted my English teacher about how Odysseus, the supposed hero of the story, celebrates his victory over Troy by raping the local woman. I quote the cliff notes here because that's what everyone actually read. That didn't seem very heroic to me, and I was confused why we had not addressed this part of the book in class. The explanation my teacher offered me was something along the lines of, well, that's just what you did back then, before he quickly moved on from the topic. In the past few years, we've shown a spotlight on how the media portrays women, and there have been active campaigns against the mind-numbing, sexist, subliminal messaging. What does it mean to you when I say run like a girl? It means run fast as you can. However, what I've noticed throughout my past four years of English classes is that we rarely hold our education system the same standard we hold daytime television. It's not even really how women are represented, but rather that they just aren't represented. Out of all the assigned reading books I've been given throughout high school, only two of them were written by women, To Kill a Mockingbird and The Glass Castle. Not a single book we read this year for class has had a female main character. From our reading list, you would think men made up 80% of the population. It may not seem all that bad, but slowly, exclusion can teach a person that there's no place for her in literature. I remember a time when, despite my love of making movies, I didn't want to be a director, for some reason I couldn't quite put my finger on. I now realize that the lack of female representation in the film industry had given the word director a male connotation for me, and thus I couldn't identify with it. If we continue on like this, the word author may soon have a similar connotation. While the year 1984 looked more like this than this. George Orwell's commentary on subconscious manipulation wasn't so far off. Whether the education system means to or not, they are, as Orwell phrases it, tearing human minds to pieces and putting them together again in new shapes of their own choosing. However, Orwell also provides advice on how to protect yourself. This year, I've witnessed a conscious rebellion. We spent an entire day for a semester criticizing how women in The Alchemist exist only as love interests who wait eternally and selflessly for Santiago. We talked about the danger of a single story and discussed the gender roles in Hamlet instead of merely passing them off as just how it was back then. We shouldn't ignore masterpieces because they are problematic, but we shouldn't take everything they say as universal truth either. The lesson I've taken away from high school English, or the meaning of the work as a whole, if you will, is to question everything to be conscious and to rebel.